Hey, how's it going? This is Sean here, and today we are going to start a brand new Angular project, and I'm going to walk you through the core principles of Angular and show you um, the file structure and how everything works. By the end of this video, you'll know how to uh, launch and set up and generate your own Angular projects, understand um, where to go, how to build whatever you want, and uh, how to generate all kinds of different components and classes and services for this thing, plus how to use uh, new JavaScript uh, data binding features and a lot, lot more. So this is going to be the first video in a series of six projects that I am recording and doing and this project right here is going to be building a to-do list now this to-do list um, is going to be incorporating bootstrap so it's really cool it's really laid out um, there is a link to the code uh, below this video or if I'm emailing this to you I will send it along with you in the email so you can simply have one page open and grab the code as we go along uh, to make this video really short um, so let's get to it. Um, you should have Node.js installed on your system. If you don't have Node.js, and you're also going to need um, GitHub desktop tools. So uh, the links are below, um, or I have emailed them to you. So go ahead and pause the video here and install those if you haven't installed them. And I'll wait just a second. All right, great. Hopefully you have those installed on your system. Now if you got everything going and it's all installed, uh, let's get to building our app. You should have noticed um, that when you installed the GitHub desktop, that GitHub gave you a few tools and put them on your desktop or may have asked you to put them in your taskbar. On Mac users, um, I'm not sure how that would work out. They probably put it on your desktop as well. But we want to use these bash tools. Um, you can use your command line to gen generate Angular all you want. And if you're more comfortable using the command line or the terminal in Linux or Mac, be my guest. Go ahead and use it. I prefer using the git command tool for two reasons. Uh, for one, it comes with extra features and it's a bash command tool which lets us reach out on the internet and grab all kinds of really cool libraries and packages that um, normal terminals typically can't handle. So uh, it, it's a more powerful command line terminal essentially. So um, I'm going to use it and I'm going to show you how to use it real quick and then I'm going to teach you how to use a couple command lines uh, so we can build a directory and then we'll get started with our project. So first of all, if you're going to use your regular command line then just ignore this but go ahead and open up your terminal. Uh, if you're going to use the git command, right click on it and go to run as administrator. You always want to run as administrator when working on a terminal and setting up any type of project whether it's Angular or Vue or React. Um, so go ahead and open that up. Now you'll see here that um, I'm not on my desktop. We're going to create a directory on our desktop. So in order to do that we're going to need to navigate to our desktop so we can make the folder that we need. So in order to do that press CD which means current directory and then press space and type desktop. Now you're going to be learning a lot about file paths in Angular because we're going to be manipulating some file paths um, to basically point our files at different files so we can um, use the resources and libraries within those files. But go ahead and just for now press CD desktop and you'll notice that you get to your desktop. Now um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a directory. So how we do that is we type in mkdir and then uh, we press space and then we're going to name our directory uh, new underscore angular and then underscore app. Now the reason you want to put underscores or you can even go ahead and put new dash angular dash to do dash app or whatever um, if you leave that blank and you leave spaces in between those you're going to create an instance of every one of those words you're going to create a folder an instance of every word will create a folder so um, you'd end up with in this case four different folders four different directories um, that we don't need so make sure you use the dashes or the underscores so type it new angular app and then after you're done with that go ahead and press enter all right um, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to um, go to the folder that we just created so how do we do that we use CD now there's a trick here I'm going to show you um, two ways because you gotta look at your file path for a minute right now we're on our desktop 
So we can go one step forward and one step back from any direction where we're at uh, simply by going CD and then typing in the name of that folder. So I can go to um, the new Angular app and I typed app one up there because I've, I just created a blank folder but I already have the project set up in a new Angular app folder which you can see sitting right under here so I'm gonna go ahead and direct into that now this will work because I'm on my desktop but if you are in your user folder um, your basic profile folder you're not gonna be able to get there because you're two steps away meaning that your folder is two file steps away in the file path now there's a way if you're building in the documents and you want to save all your files there on a drive or something like that um, in order to get the file path instead of having to type all that stuff out there's a really easy way to do that just simply just go click on your folder um, and you'll see the file path up here in the file path bar and you can right click on it copy that address and you can simply um, paste that in there so just like this okay and that's it plain and simple just get your file path copy it from whatever file directory you're in or wherever you see the file path and let's get to going so let's get into that folder alright now that we're in our folder we are going to have to install uh, angular CLI now if you've done this before and you've installed the angular CLI which the angular CLI means command line interface and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second um, and in order to do this we don't want to be in our folder we will actually want to set up angular um, in our profile folder so you could either open up a new command line or you can just um, go ahead and put the file path in there it's just easier for me to uh, go ahead and open up a new command line because we want to install angular CLI globally and CLI means command line interface angular comes packaged um, and it ships with uh, this this command line interface that lets us interact with our project that it's going to generate um, within our IDE and it lets us run terminal commands and do all kinds of really great stuff um, to serve up an actual project on a pre-built server uh, for uh, testing and lets us work with it like if it were in a live environment online so being that's the case, um, we want to have the Angular CLI installed. And typically, any of these JavaScript frameworks like Vue and React and any other JavaScript framework you come along, they're typically going to have a CLI. And you're going to want that CLI uh, installed. All right. So that'll be installed globally. And the way you do that is to make sure you're in your, your root directory, just for your profile, and you type in npm install npm means node package manager and then we're gonna press install then you're gonna press dash G which means global you're gonna put it global so you can access the thing that we are installing globally um, and then at angular forward slash CLI command line interface so go ahead and press that right now and then um, that's gonna take a while for you to install and I already have it installed so go ahead and pause the video right here and then uh, once that is installed, uh, we'll come back and we'll start setting up the project. All right, great. Hopefully everything went smooth. And now you have Angular CLI installed on your desktop. So let's go ahead and click out of this. Now what we're going to do is um, need to navigate to that app we created. So go ahead and uh, navigate to your new Angular app directory. And we are simply going to create our new app so or if you're there are you there okay hopefully you're there now so let's go ahead so type in ng which ng we're going to be using a lot you're in ng means angular um, it's the abbreviation they came up with for angular and it works out really great so just remember ng means angular we're calling angular to tell it hey we want to create a new um, to do dash app okay that's all we're gonna do that's all you need and this will create all the project files and connect all the node modules and put the directives uh, unit testing equipment and all the really cool stuff that we need to build an angular 5 project so as long as you got that set up and ready and typed in go ahead and press and type that and that's gonna take a while to set up as well so once that is done um, go ahead and pause the video here and resume it when you're finished all right great
Hopefully your Angular project is 100% set up. You'll notice that if you scroll up and see what it actually set up, it actually created and generate all kinds of different files that we're about to get into and I'm going to show you the structure. Now since you're um, in that file directory, uh, we want to go into the, to the new directory that we just created. So in order to do that, um, if you're still in the new Angular app, the folder that we actually made, then um, go ahead and type in cd and then type in to do um, dash app. All right, now we should actually be inside the app. Now that we are inside this app, um, we can open up our IDE from the command line too, which will open up our project in its entirety and uh, we can start working on it. So um, hopefully uh, you're using Visual Studio Code. If you don't have Visual Studio Code as your IDE, go ahead and download Visual Studio Code online and um, come back when you're ready and we'll get you just get going. We'll pause here until you get it done. All right, hopefully you got Visual Studio Code installed. If you don't have Visual Studio Code and you want to use WebStorm or something else, that's totally fine. Uh, I might have mentioned that before I had to pause it and install it, but if you already have it, then you probably knew that this was coming too. So let's go ahead and type in the word code and let's press enter. Now this is going to open up Visual Studio Code and it's going to open up our project. And as you see here, my project's fully opened up and I'm sitting here because I had this project open before. And if your project didn't open up, and you're going to need to go up to file and open folder, not file. Open the folder and then find your directory and then click on the folder that um, that was created by um, Angular, which here's my directory. That's the folder we created, the one I just clicked on. And this is what Angular actually generates, the to-do app. So click on that folder, open up the folder in its entirety, not the file. We're not opening up a file, we're opening up all this stuff here. And I'll go over it with you really fast so you get a good understanding of what we're dealing with here. I'm going to go ahead and shut my command line terminal down. There's no need for that to be open. So, what are we looking at here? I'm going to close the source folder just for a minute. I'm going to go over this with you really fast, um, but really effectively. All right. This E2E folder, this is um, all stuff that I'm about to show you is stuff that um, the project needs to work in the backgrounds because what we're doing is we're using the, uh, the node machine because it is a machine, it's the engine for Angular. And it does a lot more than that. It actually goes out online if we type in the commands and it'll pull in resources and dependencies for us to use. It comes with unit testing. Um, and it's structured in such a way that it has its own server and all kinds of other really cool features uh, to build these single web applications uh, with minimal code and the ability to inject this code into regular HTML elements using JavaScript and TypeScript, which I will explain TypeScript here in a minute. If you're not familiar with TypeScript, um, don't worry about it. Um, we'll get into that here in just a second. So the E2E folder, this is a folder that's going to ho hold uh, your directives basically for how to um, operate the unit test and some TypeScript and your JSON files. We're never going to touch this folder. Your node modules folder, this got tons of folders in it with all kinds of different components and dependencies um, that come with node package that we can call upon and inject into any of our pages to use the different functionality. If you want to open that folder and check it out, be my guest. I'm not going to, I'll click on it real quick. You can see we've got the Angular core and there's just tons of folders in there with all kinds of cool dependencies. Um, a lot of them we're not going to use, uh, but some of them we will. Um, I'm going to skip the source folder for now. But let's go down here to the TS linter. This is our configuration for our IDE. It tells the IDE and the linter what to actually do. Um, that's by, by basically all this does. Our TS config file, another configuration file, um, that just tells us um, our TypeScript configuration. We're using the ES2017, um, targeting with ES5, and it's just, just more background stuff we're not going to be dealing with. The readme file is just a readme md file that um, shows the resources uh, for git and a bunch of different other things the code scaffolding development server and uh, the type of build and the unit test stuff just a bunch of stuff we're not going to use um, protractor just more stuff uh, that's for the back end uh, it's a configuration file 
Uh, your package.json file, this one you might use. We're not going to use it in this project, but be aware of the package.json file because this actually has all your dependencies in it, as you can see here. Um, you see we're using the Angular CLI, we're using the Angular compiler, the language service, uh, Jasmine and Karma, which are our unit testing files. Um, this has built-in unit testing so we can actually test our code, test our methods, test all of our cool functionality before we actually um, put it into production and launch it to the web. So, And I'm going to go over this with you in detail because we're going to run some unit tests. I'm going to teach you how to use it. Um, then it got to the linter and it talks to the TypeScript node conversion and all this. So these are dependencies, or development dependencies for this project. Um, package.json lock, that's just some more back-end stuff you don't need to really worry about right now. If you want to learn more about these, um, the actual file structure, you can go to Angular. Uh, .io, and it'll walk you through all these different things and give you really detailed explanations of what these are. Uh, this is the configuration file for our unit testing that I told you about. Uh, Git nor this is the, the configuration for our GitHub advancements. Um, the editor config, this is our basic configuration for the editor, like how many indent sizes, the space, the character set, um, if we want to insert new lines or trimming white spaces. It's all stuff that has to do with the editor itself. Now the Angular CLI.json file, this actually specifies the parameters of different features. Um, it shows where our root directory is, our index file, our script file, but it also does a little bit more than that. Um, in here we can specify um, more dependencies for like our styles and we'll get to this part when we uh, install Bootstrap uh, because we'll actually have to put the file path for the bootstrap that we install. We're going to use Node and we're going to call out to the web and we're going to say, hey bootstrap, we need your dependencies because we're using you in our project and they're going to install the bootstrap library into our application and then we can just simply point the address at it and we can use it throughout our app. It's a pretty cool thing. Um, but there's also another way to do it so we don't have to use this angular cli.json file but this is an important file that you should be aware of. Um, but we're not going to use it at any point unless I um, put the bootstrap in here and I decide later that that's where we're going to stick it. But other than that, all of these loose files under here and these two top folders, we're not doing anything with. We don't work there. We just ignore them all completely. They have, we have nothing to do with those folders. What we got to work with is in here, the source folder, the SRC folder. So if we open up the SRC folder, you're going to notice a few things. You're going to notice we have our app right here, and I'll explain this in a minute. We have our assets folder if we want to have images and different assets for our project. This is where we'd stick them. We'd create folders in there, call it images, and that's where we'd go. Our environments, these are environmental variables that have to do with our app. We're never going to mess with anything in this folder, so just forget that a folder exists. Um, this is our favorite con. It's just the basic um, Angular 5 favicon um, for when we open up the web browser and we see our project you'll see it at the very top there um, at the tab of the browser page. Um, these TS configuration spec files the .json and this .json app file and then this test TS file these are our configuration files for uh, connecting more unit testing and the main TS and the polyfills these are these are actually layers and functions all these files here, these are TypeScript layers and libraries that um, Angular needs to construct our app. And I'll show you in the console later where we can see them and how it calls upon them uh, to use them. Uh, then we have a styles CSS. This is our global style sheet. If we want to make global style changes, we go to this style sheet right here. Then we have our index.html page, which is our home page. This is our main page that Angular serves up. Now, let's get into talking about what this TypeScript is and what this app folder up here actually does. All right, Angular uses uh, a bootstrap method to um, implore pulling information into a kind of two-way dynamic motion. Um, I don't have the image ready, but you can see the image of how it all works on the Angular doc site. But let me explain it to you real briefly. Like any website, and in this case, we're building a web application because we can interact with it. Um, it has an index HTML file. This is our home page right here. This is our index.html file. And what you'll notice here is these two tagged scripts right here, which 
happen to be our selectors. And you're like, well, what's a selector? Well, a selector is how we are able to bootstrap the root component, which is this app folder, um, into our view right here. Now, in order for you to understand this, let's go ahead and get one thing going, and I can line you out, and we'll get straight. Go ahead, if you don't already have this bottom part open here, to go to View, go to Output, and then go to your terminal, and let's serve our project. And in order to serve our project, what we're going to do is type in ng serve. This is going to open up our server and launch our project so we can see what we actually have. So let's go ahead and do this. And this will take a second for it to generate, pull all the files together. But now we're going to serve our live project. And you're going to see very quickly here. I always throw a web page up first while this is crunching, so it helps load faster. You guys don't have to do this, but. Um, if you want to do this, you can go ahead and open up a blank web page and type in localhost uh, 4200. I'm going to go ahead and just go that way. And it's not finding anything now, but soon we will. You see it's at 10%. It's running through the motions. And I'm going to go over this app folder with you, and I'm going to show you what a component is. Let's go ahead and open up the folder. A component is actually made up of an HTML file, a uh, style sheet file, um, a TypeScript file, which in essence is our JavaScript file um, for our logic, and then it has a unit testing file. The special thing about this app root folder and why it's never going to change is because of this app.modules.ts file. This is the file that tells us what components, what directories, um, what dependencies we are using with our with what we are actually building. Um, it's very important to understand that um, this app.modules.ts file is where we are going to be declaring um, what declarations, dependencies, things that we import that we are using for our actual app. So let me go ahead and save that real quick. Um, the rest of these files, think of it like a, a web page. We have our home page down here, correct? And on a normal website, um, we typically have our home page. And if we want to get to any other page, we'd have to click a, a static link um, that would take us to another page. And every web page um, has a style sheet of its own, has the HTML uh, file, which makes up what everybody interacts with and sees and then you know you have usually have a couple JavaScript files attached to that to give it its functionality um, this is kind of the same thing if you think about it because what we're doing and instead of building links to go to different pages we're building all of our pages as components to where we can call them in one page hence being a single page web application and the way we're able to call this HTML page, our template for everybody to see, is by giving it what we call a selector. And that is what we see right here this little tag, um, this little app dash root tag. It's our selector. By simply calling this tag right here, this little tag, this is going over here and calling this entire folder and all the constructs within to actually. Um, be uh, show inside here right there in that body section and populate this area right here now let me see what I got going on here because we should be good to go I have everything set and let me restart the server a couple times and save these things and then restart that it's saying it is all right and there you go now I'm going to go ahead and, and get rid of this up here. That shouldn't be there. But you see, this is our actual one single page web application. Um, it has all this stuff. And you see how it's connected on a server. So it's dynamic. Every change that we made is, make, is automatically updated in real time. It's an asynchronous server that's letting us make changes in real time. And it's a lot better than making changes on a web page and having to keep refreshing it over and over and over. So for those of you who have built websites before and, and understand the, the grotesque amount of time it takes to build a website the old style way, 
don't have to worry about this ever again with angular now what we're doing with this tag well this is this whole page right here is this indexed HTML page right here okay this whole page as you can see let's go over it we got um, a header up here which gives us some metadata lines out the title and this is stuff that's just metadata basically because it's our head and we're not going to see this stuff um, but we can see we have a body tag right here that's calling our component app brew now angular lets us generate all kinds of things from classes to services uh, to new components that we can use and we have all of these really cool shortcuts that we can use using these HTML tags, these select this selector right here, um, to um, build you know an awesome view for our our application. And when you hear me talk about view, I'm talking about the actual web page, the view. Um, if you understand the concept of model view model or model view view model, um, the model is your business logic at the end, and the view is what everybody sees and interacts with. Um, with JavaScript, we have the DOM, which DOM is an interceptive change of the view um, because of something that happened in the back end. Um, and it's all an interconnecting uh, cycle of logic that I'm going to explain to you as we go along here. But let's go ahead and go to our component because this is where this view that we're seeing, welcome app, is coming from. See, here's the HTML page, app.component.html. Here's all of our code that we're seeing right here above my head. Um, this all comes from this component. Now we can style it to style sheet, or I could use this global style sheet right here, and I can style something either way. So I can style whatever I want from either one of these. But now, say if I had another component in here, and I tried adding some style to the app component. Say I built a component called the to do component, um, and I put some CSS in here to change the font color to blue, but I wanted to take effect for that to do, it wouldn't work because it's not in the same component. This directory, this app directory, holds all these folders making up the component, and that component we are able to utilize anywhere through any other component using the selector or put it into the home page here where everything goes through. So that's how it works. We have the home page and the app root component is bootstrapped to our home page. That's what the in essence they mean by bootstrap. And here we can see that it's bootstrapped by going to that special page, the app.modules.ts page, which is a special page, it's the only one we're gonna have and it's only going to be in this component, the app root component. And you can see it here, bootstrap, app component. Now, we can make another component like a to-do component or a profile component or an images component, which will have all four of these four files in here. It won't not have the special app modules file, but we can point um, the bootstrap for whatever we want to bootstrap uh, in here so I can put app component I can say I can remain that to do component if we have a new to do component I'm trying to get you to understand that the concept of components because components are what we're using and we can use these as reusable objects now we're building a whole web application with one component right here alright we got a uh, title and image some links down here um, and everything works and that's just off one component what if I just wanted to a component um, to build like a search bar or a little gadget on the side that counts how many people visited the site we can do that too with components there's no limit to what we can or can't do with components but you gotta understand the essential concept is instead of building a home page or an about us page or any other type of page that goes to a website we can build a about us component a contact us component and their components which we can call anywhere throughout this single page because everything goes back to the index.html page so now that that description's over let's get into breaking down our component because this is the only place you're gonna work so go to source go to app and this is where we're doing our work we will never mess with this folder unless with this file right here um, the app modules file unless we're adding a module or a dependency to our working project um, we will do work in this HTML and actually everything in here I'm going to delete and we're going to recode and put some new HTML in here. 
uh, we will add some styles uh, to this and uh, we'll add some unit test stuff which the spec.ts file this is our unit test file um, I've taken a lot of stuff out of my unit test file because we're gonna I got some new code we're gonna put in there but don't worry about it um, we can generate unit test files if we want for any part as you see and we're gonna walk along with me here code along with me here in just a second we're gonna generate all kinds of stuff um, the component TS file this is our business logic this is our back end now you finally get to understand what TypeScript is all about so TypeScript what is TypeScript well JavaScript as you know isn't really strongly typed um, meaning that um, like for instance when you have a global variable how it can be used as a state variable and um, you know it can get confused sometimes it's not really tightly object orientated well that's why the inventors of TypeScript well one guy actually he came up with TypeScript I uh, worked for Microsoft Microsoft developed TypeScript so that way we can turn JavaScript into tightly scripted um, code language for us to use in Angular 5 now you don't have to learn TypeScript um, it's JavaScript essentially it's just the way they format it so you don't need to learn new new language because it actually converts it into TypeScript for us in Angular all in the background and it's not really much different from TypeScript if you really know JavaScript very well so don't worry about it all you need to understand is this TypeScript file because every TypeScript file will be laid out in this specific order there's three proponents to a TypeScript file um, that we will be using since this is where the business logic is let me start up here at the top our imports we're telling this that we're importing from our component um, we look down here we have our app component it generated this for us we also have forms module ng module now some of these you're not going to have and I'm going to go with you and set some of them up so don't worry about it now but you can see that's that's what we have in there we're calling on our component from angular core and then down here we got what's called a decorator now this name can change from component because that's what it's called component uh, to all kinds of different things injector uh, whatever but you need to know what it is it's decorator and always has this at symbol as you can see here the reason we call it a decorator is because for Wern we address the selector name that app root remember how over here on the HTML file the index.html file this tag says app root well if I was to change the name of this selector to like App Rudy or App Rudify or something like that. Well, we'd have to change that selector in here too. Now it'd have to be App Root or App Rudify. But either way, we'd still get this view. Everything we're seeing over here to the right um, is sh is through this little tag. So let's look at the inspector real quick. And you can see how light the code is. And we're looking right here in the App Root. All right. And you can see here that. Um, it says ng host dash CSO. They are injecting this component and everything with that into this tag. So see how this works? It's it's injecting it. Um, it's an injection state variable uh, for HTML. That's what this program is. It, we injecting things into actual HTML elements. Now Angular's got a lot of really cool ways that we're going to see right here in a little bit on how they manipulate elements, and I'm going to show you really fast how to do that. But let's get back to the TypeScript file. Other than this decorator, it actually points to its HTML file, which is right here where my mouse is hovering over. And then we got a CSS file that comes with it, just like any other about or home page. But this one is our root bootstrap folder, so this is always going to be permanent. This is always going to be permanent. So, And then it has a class. All right. Now, anywhere in between this and this, we can build a constructor. We can um, use any type of directives from Angular, and we can build any type of logic we want in between those. Right now, I have a variable called title, which has the value of app. And what this is called right here, um, what we're doing with this variable, uh, is what we're going to get into talking about here in just a second. Um, it's Angular's data binding. Um, and there's four different ways of data binding uh, that Angular handles data binding. Actually, there's a couple ways, uh, more than four, that they handle data binding. And then I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a little slide real quick, and then we'll get into that. Um, but this is how you need to know. There's only three proponents to your TypeScript file. 
every component we work in, if we build or generate a new one, will have a TypeScript file, an HTML file, a CSS file, and a unit testing file. That's it, these four files. We can build a hundred components that all have all four of these files. But the root component, like I said, is the only one that has the app model files. So let's start talking about um, the actual data binding that uh, we are um, able to do now because of Angular. Um, Angular allows us and they have so much built-in functionality for us to write minimal code and have awesome effects. So let's get into talking about that and then we'll start coding this app out. So let's look for a minute on um, this right here. I put this little slide together for you. So this is how data binding principles work. Okay. First off, we have string interpolation. String interpolation takes information from our business logic, the model in the back, and sends it to our view. Property binding is the same thing. We're able to bind to actual properties within our HTML elements and interchange them to produce the view. Then we have event binding, like click events or input events, that we're actually able to manipulate from the view and change logic um, in the back end in our business logic. And then we have two-way data binding, which lets us manipulate both the back and the front. So if somebody in the view makes a change in the front or enters some information, then we can do logic in the back and send it back. So we have asynchronous data communication with Angular 5, and it's freaking awesome. So we get to do all kinds of stuff with really minimal code. I'm about to show you how to set it up right now. So let's get into doing that. And if you want any more information on how all of this stuff works, go to the angular.io guide and the user input sections talks about all the different data stuff that I'm going over with you. But you get real in depth and learn about it. And they got really cool code examples you can throw in your project and test out. And um, that's pretty much it. So let's, let's test out a few features. We already have some string interpolation going on. String interpolation, um, is the interpolation of strings. So that means it has to output a string. Now this says title equals app. The value for this this property is app. So let's look over here. We look up here in our h1 tag. Here's our property title. Here on our page right above my head here's the value app. So we can go back here and I can change this this property here. It says value and I could even put in like 5 plus 5. Let's get rid of these. All right, now I'll go ahead and save that, and then we'll watch what happens. It's building it. Now you can see here, we're outputting logical numbers, you know, logical evaluation of, 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 of numerical values. Uh, we can do that too. But uh, the main thing is, we can't go up here into our string interpolation what you'll also notice is wrapped in these double squirrely braces um, you can't actually add logic in there so if I put title um, plus uh, if I put 5 plus 5 in here um, let's see what happens it'll give us 10 but what if I was to type in title equals 5 plus 5 and put an actual property or write a function? Then we're going to get a big huge error because we're not allowed to actually conduct logic in here. But we are able to reference a property and its value as long as it outputs a string within these double curly braces. So just remember that, and you can do this from anywhere. Um, and the way you do it is you basically write some double curly braces, type in your property name, which in this instance will be title, your linter should pick it up, and then we write it in between our class. So this is our TypeScript class. So everything below the decorator, this is where we start writing some code. We can build constructors. We can do all kinds of stuff in here. And we're going to see here in a minute, we're going to build some functions. And we're going to build some really cool stuff. So let's go back over here 
to this, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this uh, image. Let me go ahead and save this real quick so we can rebuild that asset and that'll build over. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete the image and everything else out of there and I'm gonna go ahead and save that and we'll keep that title. Now that you've seen um, string interpolation, you should be able to understand that where you can do that from anywhere in your app. So let me look over here and grab some code because we are going to work on property binding real quick. And I will show you what property binding is. Alrighty. So let's, um, let's try this. Um, property binding. Let's use a P tag. I'm going to set that up and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set up uh, a button real quick let's set up a button now in my button um, well, let's go ahead and set up an input to all right so Property binding is when we can bind to any HTML property. So for this P tag, for instance, say I wanted to bind to the property um, back here. Um, let's let's go back here and say I wanted to bind to the property title that we got set up. So I can use any property, and every HTML element has different subsets of properties you can use. So let's see what properties we got here. Um, you'll see a list here pops up because we're in the P tag, the paragraph tag. Um, these are all the different properties and the way we're going to access these is through um, the square brackets. By putting any property within any HTML element, we're able to bind that property with any business logic on our TypeScript page. So if I want to change the inner HTML of this P, I can simply go down here to uh, our inner text Let's try that one and say I want it to equal title I can simply put the title variable we have here and save that and boom you'll see that it comes out as 10 because we haven't changed the proponent back there of 10 so let's look at that real quick all right see that says 10 let's go ahead and change that to something um, else welcome to um, our new app and oh, I probably close those up so okay another thing is uh, use the single um, quotations because it likes them better and your links are better you're gonna see some red lines you don't have to but um, for the most part when you're doing coding use your singles in angular because it, it makes it, those red lines go away and if you don't care about them, you don't worry about it. But you'll see here that, that our new app is showing right here. And what did we do to that? Basically, all I did is wrapped this property in our text in these square brackets. Now in regular JavaScript, we'd have to write a whole line of code just to get that to function. Or at least something a lot longer than just that one word being wrapped in two square brackets. So, um, I mean, that's just a, another feature that Angular brings along. And this is called property binding. All right, now we can get into what is called event binding. So let us introduce that. And event binding lets us do all kinds of really cool stuff. And I'm actually gonna put that input at the top here because we are gonna manipulate a few. All right, so now we got an input. We got a little clickable button here. So now, what are some events that we can click on here? So, let me grab this right here. Let's go back here. I want to write a function in our TypeScript file. And you can write as many functions as you want. Um, I'm just going to call it uh, change, change text. And we'll call it... Um, Let me see, what am I doing here? Do, do, do. We'll just call it that variable my text. That's just to pass a parameter. We're gonna make it string and close that off and write a function in here to this dot title. Um, 
equals um, text. Boom. So okay, then we should be good there. This needs a white space in between it. And that's another thing with the Visual Studio Code. You can go up here and actually add all kinds of really cool plugins. And you can add all kinds of really cool stuff by adding these plugins. Like if you're not seeing all these cool little icons like me, um, I got a plugin to see these. Um, and all the different color variations and stuff like that. You just search around for plugins that you're going to find useful um, for what you want and what you're comfortable with. And, and they have them. They, they got them for everything. Um, but here's a function that we're going to pass a variable in uh, using some event binding. Um, the what we're going to do here is we're going to use some actual predetermined text. Uh, they have a reserved function called uh, dollar sign event, which will allow for us to um, use events and and actually capture the property of the event and the event action to send to this function very simply. So how we do that? Um, Let's start with the input, and we will write on the input. Um, let's just write uh, input value, and that will equal um, what do we call that function back there? Go ahead and just copy this whole function. that in there and then we're going to use the dollar sign event which triggers the event reserve method and then we're going to send this to the actual value because so we have to step through the actual DOM and through the event and we have to go to where our target is and then where our value is so whatever our input is Okay, so let's uh, check this out real quick. Let me see if I have to do. Oh, we don't got our buttons. Okay, now back to what we we're doing. So um, let us check this out. So I have this function change text. We're going to send a parameter in here and it's going to um, change the title of the text in here. So let's go ahead and change this. And I've also went ahead and I've added a um, property binding to the value so that way the input has a value called title just to make a clearer demonstration. So let's check that out. So when this regenerates, you can see here that the value of our new app um, is, is our new app and the click doesn't work yet. But we can see here, like, look, check it out. Um, nothing's happening. Well, what happens when we start typing? Well, don't forget we have the intertext property binded, um, that property set as the title property that we make, which is the title property of this string interpolation above us, um, of the pro of the title which says our new app, and then uh, let's start typing and look what happens here. Now we have an effect by typing into that input changed everything that that title is because our function specifies that anything we put in the input now um, is to change the property title um, to whatever we type in there and that's simply how property binding actually works this is actually called the event property binding so event pretty or event uh, event change binding I'm sorry but this is the event change binding that we're able to do um, with just minimal code. Now we can use this with uh, Boolean factors to change, or we can um, use, uh, you know, a couple different functions to, you know, dive deeper into more events that we can bind to. And I'm not going to show you that in this video. I have other videos. Um, in my other course that I'm doing so you can check that out and I go through all of these principles very thoroughly um, but for now I just want you to make you aware of this so far we've went through string interpolation uh, we went through uh, property binding which is square brackets uh, we put the uh, round ones 
around an event that's called event binding and now we have to deal with two-way data binding so how do we do two-way data binding well in order to do two-way data binding um, we're going to use some directives that ship with angular and these directives are pretty simple to use um, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this out of the input completely and what we're going to do is we're going to use the square brackets again but we're also going to put the regular parentheses inside that then we're going to type in ng model now this ng model ships with um, angular and it's a directive that we can use to do two-way data communication between the view and the model then we set it equal to our title property and there we go so let's go ahead and save that this simple little tag right here by putting square bracket parentheses ng model will equal title now if yours isn't working there's a reason why now if I go in here and type um, cool app um, you can see right here that it's changing all my properties are changing because I've tied it in using ng model and you can use this anywhere throughout any HTML and the, the variation of what I'm trying to show you here is that angular has gone above and beyond uh, to write code that will change HTML elements in new ways and these are for the new ways we could actually write loops um, within there using ng4 we can write for loops and we can write if statements that are based on boolean factors uh, to determine if something is true or false um, and to use those um, they're, they're subjective directories because they actually change the DOM in their subjectiveness so um, I'm not going to show you this in this video because we're not going to use it but there are other videos that are going to go way more in depth to the features that Angular has I just clearly wanted to demonstrate um, what the features are so you actually know so if this is stuff you already know then you click across this section um, and uh, we'll get into the next session where we start building the app but other than that and other than the two-way data binding that's offered here in order for this to actually work you are going to actually need to have um, a forms module imported into your modules uh, TypeScript file so this is it right here you're gonna wanna put in forms module in your imports we we're importing this forms module from the notes folder up here that has the angular directives and we're telling that hey we wanna use this forms module um, we're also gonna wanna use the HTTP module and the RSJX module but we're gonna do that in later series not this one and all you have to do is put a comma after browser module type in capital forms capital module and uh, if you're using VS Code, it should give you um, the option to click it. It should pop up for you. Um, right here in the linter, it should pop up. And then it will ask you to import um, the auto import, which will actually put across, uh, put in there for you the import forms module from Angular Forms. Make sure it's from Angular Forms, not Angular Core. And uh, that would be right here what I have highlighted. So you should have this. And you should have this as long as you got those two things in there well guess what everything that you type in here should work just fine I know that was just a lot of sloppy stuff but um, so let's um, let's get to building our to-do app all right so for this next section um, everything that I just showed you in this we're pretty much going to delete um, and you can leave the forms module uh, installed in this. It's not going to hurt anything. We're not going to delete it now. Uh, in order to build this actual project, we're going to need to build a class. So, in order to build a class, we're going to have um, the Angular CLI generate this for us. We're going to have it talk to Node and generate us some files. So, let's go ahead and get to that. All right. So, let's go ahead and go down to our terminal. And we're going to type in ng because we're going to call an Angular. And if your type doesn't work in here because sometimes when you're running the, the, the server um, it wants that server you got a little plus sign over here where you can add as many terminals as you want get a fresh new one to use so go ahead and do that and press in ng um, and you can type in the word generate if you want but um, you can also just type in the letter G or the number G or letter G I'm sorry 
um, and that means generate as well and if we put a C after it that would mean component so we're gonna do that later but for now we want to type in class and then um, we're gonna call it to do and then you're gonna type in dash dash SPEC because we're gonna generate a unit test spec file and I'm gonna show you how to run unit test real quick so we can test uh, the new constructor that we're about to build for our class uh, to make sure that we can pass it actual data and variables to make sure it works um, so go ahead and press enter and let's generate this new class alright so let's check out what we got here so so far what we have on this spec file it comes preloaded with a uh, little function with some reserved variables here um, and some reserved methods that tell it to check the file at the state that it's in to see um, if a class is able to be um, created so we already have a class named to do so it's going to check to make sure that's there basically to see how it's calling a new to do if it can't build a new to do then it's going to run this function not be truthy so um, we can add logic inside of this if we go down put those down like that and we'll add that here in just a minute um, let's look at the, the TS file this just gives us like I said an empty class well, we're about to put some logic in. Um, first of all, let's make an ID. So type in ID, and we're going to assign the ID as a, sh as a number. And then we are going to need a title. And that is going to be a string. And then complete to let us know that it's complete. And um, what do we want that to be? Let's go ahead. Oh, and I messed up. I typed in the wrong thing up here. That is a string and complete um, is going to be a boolean because we want to see if it's true or false. And then down here, we're going to build a constructor and uh, we're going to use an arrow function to um, actually build this. Let me just uh, the code should be on the sheet I gave you. If you want to go ahead and grab the grab the code off of it, you can just paste it on in there. Not you can just code along with me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste the constructor in there real quick, and boom, there we go. Uh, get rid of that export class. Now what we're gonna do is we're just basically gonna pass it a value as an object, and then we're gonna assign it and use it to assign the variable object's value. It's pretty simple. Now. Um, you noticed before, I was actually going to play a trick on you guys, but um, for the meantime, since we're trying to make this video a little shorter, um, when we run our unit test, if we didn't have an open variable here, or if this boolean wasn't assigned to false, then our test would show negative. But we'll go ahead and just run it as is, so we can get it done correctly. Um, let's see, why is that? And I just need my constructor, so let's do that anyways. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw my constructor in, and boom. All right, good to go for business. Now, like I said, that string should actually have a variable pointed at it. So let's go ahead and put an equals here, and do that. I'm just wondering why these red lines are coming up. Probably because we haven't instantiated them yet. Um, and this is gonna equal false. Now, if you were to leave this out of there, um, then we're going to throw an error on our unit test. Now, our unit test, um, go ahead and you can grab the code off the document that's below. Um, it's a Google Doc, so you should be able to open it really easy. And simply just grab um, the second section of code and throw it in there like this. And the code that I've got written here um, is going to pass it. And if it passes, then it's going to say should accept values in our constructor. It uses an arrow function, um, which opens this up uh, like an onion, basically, and lets us um, call, do a little callback work here where we're going to pass the variable title hello, and we're going to pass the variable uh, property uh, true since it's set to false, and we're going to test that. So we're going to expect it to hold those values since we're sending it to those values and we can change the complete boolean value because it's just set to that state right now um, being that it has to be set I can set it to true too but we're not going to set it to true as I uh, got it set to false 
but either way go ahead and type in in your command line terminal um, and we're gonna run the unit test real quick and write ng test that's all you have to do but the one thing you're gonna notice is that we got a spec file here and a spec file here well that's gonna run all the tests so make sure in this spec file up here if you want to just delete everything out of it um, and this little function up here is so that way you can disable that page so I uncheck that this will actually um, not check the page but I don't want anything in this app component spec file right now because it's set up to test um, our title variable that we left in here um, this title and it's supposed to say app so that does not the case right now and that's what that unit test is set to check so and it's set to check that if it's in an h1 tag which that's still good but um, just regardless don't worry about it delete everything out of that spec file and go ahead and run your ng test and let's t see what our test came up with because it's only going to run our spec test to do and it might take just a second for uh, karma jasmine to load up but you're going to see how we're able to actually do a unit test where we got a whole separate file in which we can write code to pass some dummy uh, values to our properties and check to see if you know everything works okay and our functionality is working great so here we go mine's popped up and let's see what we got here this is going to open up another local host it's uh, the Jasmine engine serves karma up and you remember down here we got this karma config.js file which these are all the, the, the configurations um, for our unit testing um, you'll see here and you see it's on port 9876 and I don't recommend you changing any of the ports so um, these are designated ports but you'll see here here it goes karma starting it's connected and let's see if we failed any test also below down here in our terminal it's gonna give us some output readings here too and it's gonna tell us whether um, everything passed and you're gonna see here one success because we we tested one file one of our files that had one argument going through it actually should have two arguments because I believe the spec file that we just made um, well it did have two arguments because it was going to check the class which the class is instantiated and then we're checking these two variables so why it just gave me one should create two but it, you see here should create an instance and that's what we got up there in the top one so it only checked the top one it hasn't checked our new one that's because we didn't save it yet so if you let me go ahead and save that and it's going to rebuild it and retest it real quick then now we're going to run our new state state our unit test and we should have uh, three different variations of pass so this says two spec failures um, to do should accept values in constructor but what do we do wrong here so this is saying unidentified equal to true and this one says um, equal to hello Oh, because it's still checking that. Hello. Okay, so, yeah. Um, and unidentified equal to true. So, let's go ahead and that's going to run it again. If you shut it off like that, it's going to run it again. But let's go look at our code real quick. And let me see what these are saying. It's going to tell us. Um, see, this shouldn't be a problem. It's just underlining it. But um, maybe that's just my linter. Either way, you should have some passes on that. Now, I know the code is fine. So if you want to back out of the tester, go ahead and press Control-C twice in your, go in your terminal and highlight it down there, um, right in there, Boop. and press Control-C twice. Um, that's going to back you out of the linter. Now, let's check to see if we are still served up because you do you use the control or command C to actually get you out of your server as well so we should be out of our testing we should be fine and I know that this method I've tested a hundred times so I know my ends not wrong so we got a little issue somewhere else and this annotations never um, really came up like this before so 
I don't know why it's doing it on this run, but we'll be fine either way, regardless. Let's move on. So, in order to um, build uh, the rest of our app, we're going to need to build a service for our app. So, in order to build this service, let's go ahead and type in ng, let's generate, um, type in service, and then um, what are we calling this service here? I think we're going to call it to do. Um, to do service unit and name it uh, to do data. That's what we'll do. We can name it whatever we want, really. But um, so ng g to generate service to do data. Press enter, and it's going to generate a service. Now you're noticing it's putting all of these files in our app root component. We don't want that. So while this is generating right here, go ahead and click on your source folder right here. And it's gonna close everything up and click up here and create a new folder. The first folder we're gonna create is gonna be called uh, to do dot class. Go ahead and press to do dot class and press enter. I'm go up and create another folder. Um, well, let me get out of that one. We don't want it inside that. You have to click the source folder again. And then create another one and call it services. All right, cool. Now we have a to do class folder and a services folder, and we'll be able to move these out in just a moment. So let's check out um, what we've got here. So it created our data services. So where are those at? Not seeing them. Set it creating them. Where to create them at? Do data service. Source app to do. seeing these damn files. Well either way go ahead and let's move your to do dot spec dot ts files into your class folder. Alright, cool. Now they should be in the class folder um, where they should hold and it, it just told me it created these two files but I don't see them anywhere. Let me um Sometimes, uh, if your linter gets really bugged out, you might have to un unclose your folder and reopen it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I don't know what the deal is for me not showing that. So I'm gonna reopen it real quick. All right. Now, hopefully, my service file should be in there when I open it back up. That was just weird. Because it showed me it created them. So yeah, there they are. So okay, cool. So here is our uh, data service files, which are both TypeScript files. And you'll see here that building a service gives us a decorator, an injectable decorator, and we're importing the injectable from Angular Core. Now the injectable is what you think it is. This actually gives us some power to inject our services uh, through variations of code into uh, not only our code through JavaScript but into our HTML elements. Remember how I showed you in the console earlier that there we're actually injecting uh, logic and code right into the elements themselves. And that's how Angular works. We're, we inject. Um, that's, it's an injectable language. We inject everything into to there. So now that those are back, if you showed up and mine didn't while you installed them, then I'm sorry that was on me. You just showed up. Go ahead and um, move them into your services folder before we work on them this time. All right, great. Now let's go ahead and look at the unit test file. Now the unit test file. All right, it's just basically uh, it's going to be testing the injectable and it's going to be checking our provider 
for the to do data service so it's going to be checking a couple things but now we got a new unit test file and you didn't have to type in the dash dash spec to create a spec file for it because services and components um, and a couple other operations and directives that angular ships with actually come with it so you don't have to worry about it but let's go ahead and let's uh, go to our data services and we're going to notice something up here too um, I'm going to show you guys how to reformat these uh, your um, your file paths here um, my code that we're about to stick in there is meant for what we're doing moving to these folders but these file paths that I have highlighted up here are kind of important I just want to talk about it right now and get it out of the way so um, this file if we were to pull it in um, let's go ahead and um, import it over here real quick let's go ahead and import it into our root component the bootstrap uh, root component of our project uh, let's go ahead and copy that import the whole thing import to do data service and you see how it redlines right here and that's because we moved it out of the root component where it wanted it to go and we put it in our own folder so how do we get to that folder well you see here you got a dot and a forward slash they got a conventional method of of file uh, path structure that we use in Angular, and you use the dot dot forward slash um, to get up one file level. Now, if we were going up to another file level, we'd use you guessed it another dot uh, dot dot forward slash to move up another file level. But since the file level we have here is services, we can tab down with our arrows to services, click services, and then click another forward slash, and then there's our service right there. And then you see it clears up bright as day and there we go but you want to use the double dots two periods and a forward slash um, to start walking out of your files into your other file path I, I tried to explain that kind of earlier as well um, when we were doing the actual um, node implementation and we were creating our directories on our desktop but uh, yeah, that, that's what I mean. You got to understand your, your files and your file paths because it's real important what we're doing here. Um, but other than that, I think we're in good shape. So let me just take care of this real quick. But all right, let's go ahead and start adding some code to this puppy. Let's go ahead and go to your sheet, um, the document that I've included with this, and we're going to actually add the code to the uh, service.ts file. So grab all that code mine's right here on my fourth monitor so I'm gonna grab that real quick and we're gonna add it to the services.ts not the spec file the TS and you're gonna want to just add it right here with this constructor just highlight that constructor because we put it back in there with the code and boom there we go now we're missing that injectable because I cut mine out so let me put mine back um, let me control Z that thing all the way back. All right now back here. All right, we are good to go. Let me see here. Oh, I got too many injectables in here. Boom. All right, cool. Now we should be good to go. The data service, yeah, it's the new data service. Merge with the relation to the data service. Yeah, that's what I look for. Import, yeah, okay. So, either way, you should might have a couple red lines up there, but regardless, um, there's your injectable. Now, where is our class? Let's go ahead and we'll scroll down here to our class. Let's see what I got here. Do do. Yeah, it's black. Yeah, black right there. All right, cool. So, you know, if you copy the whole thing and just copy it over, you should be fine. Good to go. Now let's go ahead and run through this code real quick. Uh, what we've done is uh, I've created a couple um, empty properties here. Uh, one to hold the ID for our post type. Um, another one 
for an array for the to-dos, the actual to-do list. That way we can run through our iterations. Um, one to uh, simulate the post, and this is actually what's going to push our data into a post, and then we're going to use the other functions to actually generate um, the little post type that we're going to create. Um, and then uh, we got a delete function which actually grabs the ID and calls on the to do data service and then goes through it and it throws in an argument um, saying that the to do's, which is that empty variable, um, grabs this to do's and then it filters through with an arrow function to the ID. And if it's not the ID, then it returns it so that way it can basically backtrack in a loop to grab it and um, delete the item that we want to delete. Um, that's the functionality we're going to assign to our delete button. Um, that, uh, that logic we are actually going to write in the component that we create. And then right here we let this variable, um, we get it by the ID, and if it's not the what we're looking for, then we return it. Um, the put actually cuts off, so that's what we're doing there. And then we have a get to do, which is our get option here. Um, to get this get all to do's function and uh, store it in an array. Then we have the simulate get to do, um, which actually grabs it by the ID number and returns the to do variable up there, filters it, and pops it. Um, and I'm going to show you a bunch of these different uh, commands too in the next series, but pop is a really cool man command for getting rid of something, so we pop it off there. Um, and then the toggle. Um, which I want to work on this more to make it a little bit more functional because right now all we're doing with this is we're passing an instance through and then we're letting the argument um, we're creating this instance and then passing it the argument to update it by the to do ID so essentially all we're doing is updating the ID in the back um, as a complete item um, and but we got no way to display that in this version of the app so we can create something to display that version then um, we'll probably do that in the other series of apps um, but I wasn't going to handle that in this app so we're not going to actually display that um, but other than that so we got all the functionality this is what a service is uh, the service is directed toward all the functionality inside of our app so now that we got this built let's go ahead and let's build a component so this would be pretty awesome what we're going to do and we're not going to run a unit test yet. We're going to wait till last to run a unit test. And is go ahead and build our component. So let's go ahead and type in ng, type in g, type in c, and then type in uh, just type in to do. Plain old to do. It's our to do component. Then press enter. The other series, we're actually going to create about two more components because we're actually going to create um, uh, an API and then we're going to create another service for the API and then we're going to create a service for our databases and then we'll tie in all the logic into the other two components that we built. Um, so it's a really cool deal. And then um, we're going to create a service for our actual blockchain type app that we're going to use and then we're going to install Solidity and some other cool functionality and some other frameworks inside of our program. So it'll be a really fun deal. Um, all right, now we have a totally new component up and ready to go. So let's go check it out. So we just generated a new component up here. The to do component it's in the app root component, and that's where all the components we create are gonna be held at. Um, and here it gives us, and I'll extend this out a little bit so you can see a CSS file, an HTML file, uh, which just basically got to P here a spec file which is our unit testing file and a TypeScript file which comes fully loaded with the import comes with on in it which is the directive from angular uh, it got to our selector which calls it app to do so um, then we have the template which could show says go to this HTML page and then it points the style to this CSS what it amounts is. it gives us a constructor and ng on it and all underneath this class and we're ready to rock and roll. So now that we got a component, then um, what we're going to need to do is uh, install Bootstrap into this project. So the instructions to uh, install Bootstrap are on there, and I'm going to go over them with you real quick. And I already have Bootstrap installed on my machine, but I'm going to go ahead and type in the code anyways. Um, what you're going to want to do, and you need to make sure you have the latest version of Node. So if you had Node on your machine when we got started and you don't have the latest one, 
probably update it. But um, here's what we're going to type in npm node package manager install bootstrap and then it's important to push dash dash save so we actually save it into our node modules file go ahead and press that and then pause the video right here and when you're ready we'll get back to building this out all right great hopefully you got bootstrap installed now but you'll notice that none of the effects have taken place yet that is because we have to actually tell the app that we have it in that nodes module folder so in order to do that um, we're gonna simply um, we can do it one of two ways uh, we could add it in our actual angular um, JSON file down here um, where we go the CLI JSON file um, in the style section right here under the CSS and we can add the file path here or we could actually just add it simply to our global style sheet which I like the global style sheet method a lot easier um, and it takes just the same effect so let's go ahead and put that in there so I'm gonna grab that real quick and throw that in there and it's at import then it's in the quotation marks uh, tilde sign bootstrap forward slash uh, distribution CSS bootstrap dot CSS that is where it is so go ahead and we'll save that and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out of there because I already have it installed and I'm gonna go ahead and press ng serve doesn't look like I'm served up maybe I am save everything all right now let's go ahead and since bootstraps installed you should see your changes take effect pretty immediately mine aren't because mine's still building of course um, which gives you a little bit more time to kind of figure around I'm trying to make this video a little bit slower because I've noticed the videos I've watched people doing code alongs they go like so fast da -da 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 -da, we're doing this and that and it's like really hard to keep up especially when you're trying to you know get it in your head of what you're actually doing and get the concept down plus type it in and not have to be like well what I do so uh, that's all I'm trying to do to slow it down a little bit because a lot of guys go way too far let me restart that see what goes on all right cool so yes bootstrap is in effect all right now all of my buttons and inputs they all have the bootstrap styling on it. it's really cool so now that we have a new component built we have our new class built we have our services built and we have bootstrap installed into our program let's start adding the final code into our component and let's get this puppy working now you might have asked after we installed that new component why you don't see this to do works within this p tag do you guys remember why it's because we haven't um, delegated the selector anywhere in the code we haven't told uh, our single page app that this component exists so if we look at the selector it's called app to do simply all we need to do is we can do it one of two ways we can go to our index.html file and we can add that tag here where app dash uh, to do is called and we can save that and then we'll see the paragraph pop down under here unless that wasn't it let me see let's check that selector real quick And let's see yes it is app to do so yeah all right so that's checked out so let's go back to the index.html file um, that should be correct so let me save that one more time it should say to do works but we could stack it here all we want or what we can do is leave the app component alone to be the body and let that be the bootstrap and not even mess with the index HTML page let's go ahead and cut that tag out and what we're actually gonna do is go up here to this HTML page here and we're gonna get rid of everything that is in it and we're gonna delete it completely and I'm gonna go ahead and save it now we should have a blank page now if we go ahead and add app to do 
close it off and press save we're going to get our little paragraph tag show up see here it says to do works right in the top hand corner so we've actually took that to do component uh, all four of these files and we've injected them into the root component which has injected them into our HTML index homepage. Um, pretty cool, ain't it? So that's what we're doing here. Um, and I could, like I said, I could put that tag and I can hard code that tag into the index.html page if I want. Or I could put it into the root component like we have it. So we're going to leave it right here in the root component because the root component is pretty much done after this. Now go, let's go to the root component TypeScript file here. And let's go ahead and just get rid of everything um, underneath that class. We're going to empty out this class, leave it totally blank for now. Now, let's go ahead and go back up to our HTML for our uh, component. And we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and delete that for now. And then let's go to the component here and just delete everything out of the middle of that class here. And go ahead and delete this on it stuff. So we don't we're not gonna need it and go ahead and go to the document I've got you and let's start putting in the code for the TypeScript part of it we want to put the uh, template code in last so let's go ahead and modify the component first uh, I mean the TypeScript file first so let me get down here and get that and I know I probably have them in backwards order from that but Go ahead and add the TypeScript code in first, and then we'll add in the actual code for the template last. And they call the HTML file a template for that reason, because it's the main view. It's the template of how all the logic is going to be viewed, um, essentially. Uh, it's pretty much one reason. It's, it's the view file. It's what everybody sees, so it's the template. It's what we design on. It's the it's the framework of, of our code. So they get used to calling it a template. Um, so let's add all that logic in there. And let me check to make sure I gotta add everything in there. That's the HTML. Okay, yeah, so yeah, just you can highlight everything and paste it right over. That's the way I built it. So, all right, cool. So, now we should have, um, let's see, this is to do, it's a data component. So, that. Alright, cool. I'm just checking something real quick. But yeah, you can go ahead and save all that logic right there. And if the class is actually highlighted um, with the little red squiggle line, don't worry about it. Um, it's just complaining about the, the, the on in it being next there and we're not using it. So, I mean, that's why I said you can probably just get rid of this because we got rid of it out of the bottom there. We don't really need it. Um, so yeah, go ahead and save that. I'll actually delete it out of the file here too while I'm at it. So let's go ahead. All right, that's good to go. So, all right. So when everybody copies this file, because I'm building this thing while I kind of wrote it, so um, you should be good to go. All right. So now let's add the last piece to the puzzle. Let's go ahead and add the HTML. And if you've already beat me to it, then good for you. You should be seeing your app in full blown section next to us and I uh, designed this thing it took me uh, a couple hours to implement the design and I, I like the design it's nice and clean so let's go ahead and go to your template here and just drop in the template now let's go ahead I'm gonna save everything in the files and after that we should have a full working to do application that has injected services, um, we're using classes, and we've built a component, 
and I've showed you how to use all of the four major data binding um, tools that Angular has and giving you some references to the ng if and the ng for so you can run for loops and um, boolean if statements right inside of your HTML elements that's why angular is so cool you can do so many things with HTML now that you never were able to do this stuff you can't do with regular HTML but now you can do it with angular and it's all possible because of angular so let's go ahead and check out our app here I'm gonna actually widen mine up a little bit give everybody a little bit of view here so here it is um, you'll notice here this just says enter things you need to do below and press enter so I'm gonna put um, get milk boom press get milk okay you know this looks kinda plain so there's one thing we did forget and that is the header for this so let's go over and let's go get our header which is directly below this code and um, I've left some instructions so you can actually go to Bootstrap and download your own header because they have a complete like template section of like pre-built uh, little sites with their components on them and like full web pages and they've literally blocked it out so you can just uh, right click and get the view info page source and copy blocks of code to throw in your projects. Um, and uh, that's kind of what we've done and I've modified it a little bit so that way it puts the angular um, favicon in it for us and we're not going to drop it in our to do component go back to your app root component to the HTML file and go ahead and let's move our selector down a little bit and then paste that header right in there it should look just like this and then go ahead and press save it's just nav class nav bar dark big bad and then it brings in the image and it says angular 5 to do app and you can call it whatever you want but here you see right this is our new application we've built a to do app and we can walk over a little bit of the logic in the back end real quick um, and here's you know here I can say get milk uh, study more recall angular books go online and what we do is we got an app that actually tracks everything here now I don't like the way those boxes look so there's another thing that we need to add in here let's go back to the page and I've actually got a little bit of code um, on here that you can use for the style um, sheet so go there you should see right under the the bootstrap nav bar um, how I've actually left the code um, for the style sheet and I gotta pull that up real quick so let me grab it um, let me see here Doo -doo -doo. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some uh, style to the actual, um, the global, or not the global, but the, the to-do style, so because we're going to target styling just that. And if you want to style your own, per se, um, you're more than welcome to go over there and, and style it. Um, let's see, where did I put that code at? Oh, I thought I had that code, so let me go back here for a second. So... I have to find the, where I put that code. I guess I didn't put it on that folder, so I'm going to stick it in there right now. So let me go ahead and get in there and open up that. And then after this is installed, then this thing will be complete. And this will be the end of part one so here's the code we're gonna add we're gonna make the height of the checkbox and I'm gonna put a border radius around it now I could make it a complete circle if I wanted to I'm not gonna do that right now but if you can if you want let's go ahead and save that and I'm gonna put a little padding in between the line up there um, because I wanted it off of the edge of the screen there so let's go ahead and press control s and there you go 
now this app is completely 100% done as far as phase one is done and uh, you'll see that we got the look we want uh, we're able to put to-do list items in here and now we have a totally awesome tool to add to-do list now the next step is going to be loading it up to your github as your project and the step after that would be to load it onto an actual server now there's a way to co to compile this down and ship it out and get it ready prepared to get on a server um, and all those instructions are in the angular docs at angular.io which I implore you and I'm leaving out of my tutorial on purpose so you have to go there to learn how to get this onto a website server and deploy your app because I will have other videos on this but as now for going as quick as we did through this video and building a full app you really should uh, learn how to use the angular docs because um, they're very very good so let's check out our app now see so my E is a little bit that way now now let's go ahead and let's start typing um, let's see we'll get milk right now you can see the box there is and see read cool books um, let's see do homework Boom. but anyways I'm not gonna spell that but we also got to use type in here and press enter and we can go in here now the toggle class like I said it should show a message here if you want and you can go back and write some functionality and we'll go over the class here in just a second but we're able to check all of our tasks are done on the list and we could even put a little counter over there and, and that's what the the other parts of the series going to we're gonna actually go into grabbing the data and actually singling out it to do so we can write more information in it connecting it to a database and doing all kinds of really cool stuff so um, let's uh, yeah that's it um, I styled it out for you guys and it's ready to ship it's ready to go but you can use the to-do list just like this add all the stuff you want to it and uh, you can delete the post and it counts them down here at the bottom so if you wanted to check the complete task off we, you could use string interpolation and uh, one of the functions we wrote back there for the toggle switch to display uh, you know how many uh, tasks you've completed um, if you want to and I'll leave that up to you so let's walk through the TypeScript file real quick so um, it's pretty easy functionality that I've, I've created back here for us so what we're doing here is pretty simple um, we adding to do's so to add this we had to import our service so in order to import our service into our file we first import it up here and now we are connected to the service that we made which our service is um, not connected to our class so we had to import our class as well so our class is coming in here and our service is coming in here all right now we've used it the providers providers uh, lets us declare and define injectable objects into our actual um, components here so that's what we did we're saying this is an injectable component that's why we're able to use it and inject it and if we look over here um, into the code and if I bring up the inspector let's check this what a task is well I'll show you how it actually injects so here we go and I'll scroll this up just get past this we got one up here and we can see here here's our app root tag here's the nav tag and here's our app to do so it injected that put the view in there and here's the section of the code now we can go down our code and it shows the header and it shows you right here how it's injected um, right over our bootstrap code that we have in there to do list group and then it goes through here and then here's the list item and then you can see through our list item and it shows you here how it binds the reflect ng object and how it passes the object and it shows you how it injects here and you see how minimal all that code is it's very minimal for something that looks so cool and it's so interactive um, there's very little code for it it's because we're injecting our classes and our methods into HTML um, elements here it's really really awesome so yeah that's it and we can blow it up full view and this is what it looks like it's full screen web app I mean we can look at this thing on mobile phone and if we wanted to build it for desktop um, you can style it a little different and add media um, queries on it and stuff but 
the way this looks, you can bring this up on a phone and start to do apping it. And actually, if we hook this with Ionic, um, we can copy everything we have out of this Angular project into an Ionic project and make a real mobile app out of it. And you can upload it to the Play Store and stuff. Which uh, there's all kinds of tutorials. I don't have any yet out yet on Ionic, but I will in the future. And I'll be showing you how to connect those to blockchains as well. Um, but for now, um, it's just Angular 5, and we got a slick looking app. We got some tools over here that let us add the to do, which get, grabs our to data service um, to add the to do. And then every new to do, um, we create a new instance of it. We got the toggle to do, which just basically um, lets us do a toggle of it um, and pass us the parameter whether it's checked or not. Then we got the remove to do, which lets us delete the to do. We're calling the delete to do function by ID. So I can enter, you know, all kinds of things in here. And when I delete, it knows to delete this post type. Now, think of this as a post now. Now, we got this set up as a to do list, but think if I built a service that had a profile with a user and an image. And username and the likes of people and how many likes people like them and how many comments that person used or adding comments to this well, there's about eight things I just listed there and if I took those eight things and added them inside this post type which only says get milk um, I mean think about your Facebook post when you're wanting to make a new post um, today I ate uh, good cereal boom it's the same thing it does the same functionality we've just created a post type um, essentially for a feed if we wanted to that we can already have services that are equipped to be asynchronous and update very quickly using angular services um, and angular directives so yes you could add a person in a picture and you could we could create services so more people could talk to these but we've essentially created the basis post type that is in every single post um, online for pretty much every social media application out there so um, we're done with that we've created that that's all good to go we've got a custom post type it's a bare minimum basic post type but we've got a post um, and we can post these to do objects because that's what we're calling it and uh, we can let them know that we're done with something and we can have a list of items in there for that. but I'm just trying to get your, your wheels turning to what we can actually accomplish with this because we can do a lot more with it and it'd be pretty cool so that's pretty much it that is my angular class um, that's just what I want to show everybody so I hope that you guys learned a lot and if you guys have any questions then please Feel free to email me, uh, feel free to leave messages in the comments, and if you got, like I said, anything you need help on or anything like that, let me know. And I will have another video that goes more in depth, more into detail, should be after this video, um, that goes more into using um, the actual data binding features uh, really in depth. And then um, more in depth with, uh, I'm going to show you real world examples of using that NGIF and the NG4, using loops inside the actual uh, structure there so those videos are already created and um, um, so go ahead and you can check those out and build your app and then go back and learn a little bit more or you can go to the docs at angular.io but uh, for now that's it your angular apps done i hope you guys enjoy it and uh, we'll check you later so keep coding